So was the syndicate an obvious choice out of the teams that came knocking then? Yeah. Um, that was that was sort of the team that I had always dreamed of. It, honestly, it didn't even seem like a possibility because just like with Rat Boy, Steve and Greg for all those years, like I didn't even see how it would be possible. You know, like I, it just seemed like t- too too big of a too big of a dream, really. And uh, but I was already riding a Santa Cruz, so that that for sure helped me. Um, and uh, I'd gotten to know Greg pretty well and Steve a bit too, and obviously that next year Steve was retiring, so I knew that there was at least one spot open. And then uh, the whole like with Rat, like him stepping away, that was sort of a surprise. And that kind of, I think as soon as they got, you know, when that that was happening, like they they realized like, okay, we need like, we need some riders for next year. And, uh, but it all happened pretty late, honestly. And I had, I had some really good options, like other options lined up. Um, I was speaking with Laurent from Specialized and had a really good offer from them. And that was also another dream situation for me. And that was a really, really tough call, honestly. Like it wasn't, it wasn't an easy decision by any means. Um, funny enough, uh, Canyon, uh, Fabian was recruiting me pretty hard as well. So, uh, I'd had a couple of meetings with him and it was also the tricky thing was, um, I really wanted to stay loyal to SRAM cause they'd taken such good care of me and, and, uh, syndicate was obviously Fox and Shimano. And, and I really, that was a tough, tough decision to make because SRAM and RockShox had gotten me to where I was and they had taken such good care of me and they they had plans as well to really step our team up like massive the next year as well to make it more of its own structure so like there was a lot that was that was like I felt like I really grew up a lot that year because I had to make some really hard decisions and um and like my dad was sort of helping me but I was doing all the negotiating and everything myself like I, I really wanted to to do it myself I didn't want um I think it can get kind of funny when parents get involved so like it was all on me and uh and that was that was a really tough tough choice in the end but I think when when uh when Rob from Santa Cruz and Joe and Greg and all these people are like oh like here's your tri- like here's your seat on the team if you want it like I just couldn't say no. So like, yeah, the, the syndicate in the end was the, it was the choice that I felt in my heart was the choice that I needed to make. So, um, but it was tough to tell the SRAM guys that I was leaving. That was really, really hard, especially. Yeah. After a really good season, it was, uh, I was sad. It was, it was a tough one, but, um, as soon as the decision was made, I was really happy and obviously, uh, yeah, it's a, it is a dream ride for anyone, I think. And, um, yeah, I was re- united with my uh, my rival Loris too, so that was a funny funny situation. But it all worked out way better than I think any of us could have uh, asked for. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because, like you say, Loris was your nemesis all through juniors, as he was for a few other riders as yeah. well in in your kind of age group, I suppose. Like, was there a concern for you going into a team alongside someone who'd been such a rival and like like you've accepted? you know, you weren't the best of friends, certainly in your junior years. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but I definitely had my, I was a little bit worried about it because, um, I knew Greg really well and I knew that like that would be all good. And, um, I didn't know when I signed, I didn't know that Loris was going. Um, but I guess he obviously knew that I was, you know, I had signed a contract and when, when he was speaking with them and he still decided to come over. So I was like, all right, like, it's not like he's been, it's not a surprise for him. So like, and I'd never, I'd never really spoken to him much. Like he didn't speak like great English when we were juniors and he was on a French team, like all French mechanics, all like, you know, and I, I was really surprised that he actually wanted to leave, um, like Loic and leave that, that structure. Um, so it was a, a bit of a surprise for me, but I was like, ah, you know, like we'll, uh, we'll bury the hatchet or whatever you say. And, <laughs> and it, it worked out great. Like he's honestly like one of my best friends now. And, uh, yeah, but it was funny. It was a, it was a bit funny at first. I was like, oof, I'm not sure. Maybe I made a bad decision here. Like we're not going to get along and it's going to be like uncomfortable or whatever, but no, it was, it was, it was great. Um, it all worked out. 
Yeah, and a big change, right? You went from a team that was relatively, I guess, low key, sort of under the radar. The syndicate is at the opposite end of the spectrum. I think you pretty much broke the internet with one of the best team launch videos we've ever seen. What was it like <laughs> for you kind of being thrust into the spotlight, so to speak? Yeah, it was, um, it was, a, it was a lot. Um, that was, yeah, that was, it was an adjustment for sure. Like I think with the syndicate, there was a lot of distraction. Like it was the time of my life. We had so much fun, but, um, it was, it took a little bit to kind of find myself in that team. I think, um, obviously like we all got along great and we all had like such a great time, but, uh, like, yeah, at the end of the day, you're paid to race and racing is, you know, priority number one. Um, sometimes it didn't really feel like that. Like there was so, it was so honestly, like it was so low pressure and low stress on that team. Um, sometimes I felt like I was just on holiday with a bunch of my friends. Like it didn't, it didn't feel like a job. It just felt like fun all the time. So, but it, it was like a little tricky to balance that I'd say. Um, but obviously we had you know, so much support that I wasn't used to as well. Like I had, you know, we, we had like custom bikes made for us. That was the first year of the 29er. We did like so much testing, like that off season, that first off season I was on the team, like the amount of time we spent like testing that new bike, that 29er, I'd never really tested before in my life. So I was just like, yeah, sure. Like I'll ride it. Like feels good. Like I, I was like still so naive, like so like that was a whole like new world that I hadn't really even experienced yet. So, um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a really cool opportunity and I was just like, yeah, soaking it all up. So, and yeah, that first, that first race was crazy. Like we went to Lord's first race with the 29er, like everyone was like hating on it. Everyone, it was like so much like, noise and attention i wasn't used to that like i was just the guy in the freaking back of the sram pit like doing my own thing so uh, it was like a whole different whole different thing um and then we went out and qualified first third and sixth and it was just like what is going on here like it was just yeah crazy times and then obviously it rained for the race but um that was uh, a lot different <laughs> 